Hey y'all, PD here from the Myrtle Beach Bible Bank. You know, something's been heavy on my heart lately. It's really been hard for me to stand by and, and watch when fine Jesus-loving folks blame God. Listen guys, when trouble arises, the most natural thing to do is to place the blame for it on someone or something. Sadly though, many Christians have been falsely accusing God of being the cause of their troubles. And, and they wrongly believe that, that trials and tribulations are God's tools for developing and strengthening our character. Even worse, they may have been taught that God himself is the author of our troubles, or that God is the one who makes us sick in order to teach us something. You know, this is absolutely against the Word of God, y'all. Why? Well, because the very basic principle of the Christian life is to know that is to know that God put our sin, our sickness, our disease, sorrow, grief, and poverty all on Jesus at Calvary. For God to put any of this on us now to teach us or to strengthen our faith would be a miscarriage of justice, okay? Mm -hmm. To believe that God has a purpose for sickness would mean that Jesus bore our sickness in vain. Hallelujah. What an insult to his love and care and compassion for us. Don't do that. Death and destruction, they don't reflect God's intention for us, y'all. God's originally, originally placed Adam and Eve in a wonderful garden, and he gave them dominion over all creation. And ultimately, through their disobedience, though, they gave the dominion that they had over to the devil. And that's in Genesis 1.26. It starts right there. In Romans 5, it talks about it. 2 Corinthians 4. In response to man's sin, the ground became cursed, it says in Genesis 3.17. And the whole of creation became subject to corruption, as it says in Romans 8, 20 to 21. Now, there is an outlaw loose on the earth, y'all, whose name is Satan. Jesus said in John 10.10 10, that the thief, Satan, uh, come but to steal only and to kill and destroy. I am come, he said though, Jesus, that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. The devil steals, Jesus gives. You know, those scriptures, they speak for themselves. It's your decision whether you want to be the head or the tail, okay? But God is always looking to turn our situation around for his good. Hallelujah. Romans 8.28 tells us that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love him. Because God is often able to use those situations for good to teach and correct man. Some have wrongly credited him because of that for the harassment side of things. We can learn from our mistakes and we can even learn from negative circumstances. But this is not the way that God teaches us. Okay, God has given us his word and the Holy Spirit to teach us. Okay, the Bible says every scripture is God breathed, given by his inspiration and profitable for instruction, y'all, for reproof and conviction of sin, for correction of error and discipline and obedience, y'all, and for training in righteousness so that the man of God may be complete and proficient, well-fitted, and thoroughly equipped for every good work. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Amen. That's in Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 to 17. But the truth is that the bad things that happen, they happen for multiple reasons. Yes. And only the Holy Spirit can reveal the source of trouble in any particular situation. You know, trouble can be caused by, by bad choices, uh, as we see in Deuteronomy chapter 30. Uh, the, the sinful nature of men, as we see in J James chapter 4. Uh, the devil and demonic forces, as we see in John 10, 10 and the forces of nature that have been corrupted because sin entered the earth, as we see in Matthew chapter 24, okay? And James chapter 4 as well. Uh, chapter, James chapter 4 actually tells us that violence and wars and fightings come from the hearts of men and that the wicked deeds of the flesh are described in Galatians uh, in chapter 5, okay? Satan draws upon and gains entrance through these sins, y'all, lodged in our hearts. And many 
uh, uh, of these sins have been used as instruments of violence and wrath and destruction. So many people, they choose to reject the counsel of God and the results of those actions bring about death. Don't blame it on God, blame it on you. Jesus said he came to destroy the works of the devil and to bring abundant life. It's the devil and you that are responsible. Jesus is here to help. And the responsibility of the body of Christ is to enforce God's will on the earth. Despite what the enemy tries to use against us, we can rest assured that we are not powerless. Hallelujah. Everything which pertains to life and godliness belongs to the believer. We can take upon our shield, we can take up our shield of faith and thwart all his fiery darts. The weapons of our warfare are not of this world, but they are mighty through God to pull down strongholds. As it says in Isaiah uh, 54, it says, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Hallelujah, praise Jesus. <laughs> in order to choose life and blessing, we must choose the word of God, for it is life, y'all. We have to become word-minded instead of trouble-minded. And we have to become life-minded instead of death-minded. Hallelujah. We have to become single-minded on the Word of God, praise Jesus. We become word-minded when we realize that He who raised Jesus from the dead is residing in us. And he who is in us is what? Greater than he who is in the world. Hallelujah. Oh, and it arises. The most natural thing to do is to place the blame on someone else. So let's stop doing that. Let's stop placing the blame on God. Okay? Love you. Peace out.